It come out of nowhere. And nobody knows what causes it to appear. It's like a curse. And it'll follow you and haunt you. Keeping you from enjoying your daily responsibilities and jump. Define your common sentiments of rationality and grounded theories. The creature has been simply dubbed as the graying dog. And this because from afar, it looked like a large canine. As you would imagine, it walk on its four legs. And you know, a bit of a little snout. Although it don't really seem to have a tail or nothing. Its coat is a pale like color has no color and it stands around seven or eight feet tall. When it appears to you, it always seems to be far away. And at first you may not even notice it in the background, but once you see it, you will notice the weird way that it walks. His feet barely touch the ground and it rock back and forth from his hind legs to the front legs. Almost like it was Suspended in the air like it didn't weigh anything. And it stays within your view and will travel back and forth keeping his eyes on you. And I strongly advise that you ignore it entirely. For the longer you look at the creature, the more your surroundings begin to distort. Trees and buildings around you will seem to disappear until the ground is flat and ain't nothing except miles and miles of nothing. Except for that creature dancing in front of you. And as you continue to watch it, you approach you little by little. And it becomes more mesmerizing the closer it gets. And when it gets an uncomfortable distance from you, you start to see its eyes. And its eyes are not that of a dog, though. Its eyes is white with solid black pupils that stay locked on yours. And its mouth stay hanging open, showing you that it ain't got no teeth and nothing but blackish looking gums and the expression on his face looked like it was almost surprised but you can't allow it to get too close to you because the closer it gets the more control over you it gets but just remember that it can't approach you if you don't look at it or pay attention to it the creature might moan lightly to get your attention then it'll been like start to sob or cry the longer you ignore it and when you hide in your house, you will hear it brushing up against your windows. And it'll look inside and it'll look in through any cracks or blinds or curtains. But don't look at it, man. Don't give it no attention. I mean, uh, if you do, this going to keep going on and on and on. And don't hide in your closet or any place like where you don't have a link to the outside of your house. Because it will come inside. And wait outside the door to your room. And it'll be no way to escape this thing. And while you try to sleep, you're going to feel it watching you. But you can't allow it to know if you're awake. It come in your room at night. Hoping to fill your dreams with, you know, his image or whatever. And if you keep your eyes shut and breathe normally, it'll leave before the sun come up. But from time to time, it's going to disappear and then reappear. Then just as long as it don't know that you can see it and aware of it, it can't hurt you. Please, listen to me. I'm trying to save your raggedy life. Now, I bet my best friend, Ben, I called him Big Ben when I was 19. And uh, we started a degree in music together. And uh, we ain't really had nothing in common. And I guess maybe that's why we clicked or whatever. And um, we'll, But what kind of messed with us is how in sync our childhoods was. And uh, we had been born like two weeks apart. And, um, and to the age of 12, we had a lot of the same experiences, though. I mean, you know, and we ain't never met, but just you know talking randomly and junk we just finding out like dang man that's crazy so i remember ben telling me uh about a vhs tape man we he used to have called huxley pig and will uh swack swack cartoons on it and saying 
how like crazy it was and different and junk and how he loved it. And I replied that I knew exactly which VHS he was report uh, referring to because I still had a copy of it. And, you know, and there'd be like stuff like that that happened a lot between us, man. So we like to, you know, put little, little quizzes on each other from time to time and joke about how different we were in our identical upbringings, man. So one night I was staying over there at his crib and we got to talking about kids' ghost stories and junk. Now, I love some creepy stories, but Big Ben, he don't like them, man. So the conversation was going real slow at first. And we started with the usual story, you know, kids in the neighborhood spread. And it was funny how many of our, like, town stories were exactly the same, even though, you know, we was on opposite sides of the city in Riverland, John, 10 miles apart from each other. So the real, you know, rundown places were always haunted. And we had both heard about a one-eyed black cat nobody owns that watches the children play, you know, every day. And then the stories went on and on and on, man. And uh, as stories went on, the, the similar stuff between me and him was, like, blowing our mind, too. Now, Ben got real into the conversation. And it ain't usually, you know, but he was like, so you ever, you even um, heard of this story? You know, just everything he was talking about? I was like, yeah, I heard of it. And, uh, or either I heard of the little difference, the little slightly different version in my story. You know, it was always either the same or it was right almost the same or whatever. And that's how the night just was going on. Now, after we got, you know, tired and the conversation started to slow down, and, uh, the, the last thing was said was even to this day, I'm still scared of the dog man. So please tell me you heard this story too. And I just remember, like, I was, like, shocked, man. Sound like I ain't had no idea what a dog man was. What you mean, dog man? It was a dog man. Now, as far as I know, the dog man story is just in Ben Town, not mine. So we tried looking on the Internet, but Big Ben was too easily, like, freaked out by my pictures and scary stories that popped up as we searching. Because I'm always into the horror stuff. So the uh, dog man really grabbed my attention. Now, usually kids ghost stories go into like so much detail, talking about the color of the ghost dress and the exact way the, ha- the hair hang over the ghost eyes and stuff. But there wasn't much information about the dog man. The details was real vague. Now, his words at the time was something like the older kids who were allowed on the street told us about the dog man who stood around the alleys at night and the older kids was like just scared to go go there when it got dark. So obviously it was probably some some drug dealers or drug users or whatever I told him. But he was real like like nah he was like no because they ran away when we noticed that when they would notice the kids watching them. They climb up the high walls of the of the uh in the people yards and over people garages and they wouldn't even make a noise when they did it. So the older kids wouldn't talk about it unless you pushed it out of them. And he said their feelings seemed too real to make it a joke to scare the younger kids. And he had said he had a childhood friend named Wes, and he claimed they had seen one too. And the story goes that the dog men would be found standing in small groups or more, you know, often like by themselves in the middle of an alley, looking for scraps of food, not doing much else. Now, Ben seriously think that he saw one of them, one with his mom one day walking back from the shops. You know, they was at the grocery store or whatever, man. So, the, I don't know, grocery store mall, wherever they was at. A little strip mall, probably. And he said it was in a fenced-off area where a block of uh, um, a block of apartments and stuff had been demolished a few years earlier. Now, at the opposite side of this land, he saw a skinny, hunchback do- uh, man cupping his hands full of water from, you know, just like a little stream or something, he said, which ran through the um, through the area and washing his long, greasy hair up in the thing. And he said, almost like a ritual or whatever. Even though he didn't see the homeless man's face, he said it was kind of far away to make details. He said he swear something about the man wasn't human. And I said, you know, yeah, because you, you know, you're a child and you got imagination and exaggerating your memories and stuff. But he swear he showed me the area the next morning. And if he and his mama are remembering correctly, 
I have no idea why even a homeless man would wash his head. <laughs> like, even a homeless man wouldn't wash his head in this water. Like, it was a stream, but, you know, it wasn't a, like a beautiful, bubbling stream. <laughs> you know? It wasn't like that, man. Now, West lived further up uh, from the local corner store than, uh, than Ben. He used to take a shortcut through the alley when he walked there. And uh, garbage cans and stuff was out that day. And he said he could hear a cat or dog feeding on some of the food and junk behind the cans. And it happened a lot. And everybody know to keep distance so the dog won't get aggravated and attacked, you know. You know how it go, man. You mess with a dog or something while they eating. Even a cat, man. You better not mess with them while they eating. And let their butt eat in peace. <laughs> you end up jumping on you, boy. Shoot, I had a girlfriend like that, man. Big old girl, boy. Big old furniture mover. <laughs> Shoot. That girl sat down. I get two chairs. I get two kitchen chairs and, and put them so she could sit. She had a cheek in each chair. <laughs> I let her sit down, boy, give her food. And when she got her food, you better you better not uh, reach over there and try to grab the ketchup. You better be careful. You better let her know I'm going to get the ketchup, okay? I'm not touching your food, all right? Don't take my fingers. <laughs> you better let her know something, man. She, I ain't playing I ain't to you. Had a cheek in each chair, boy. I called her, uh, you know, two chains, I called her two chairs. <laughs> anyway, Wes said the dog ain't look right. He said he only got a quick glance at it before it ran behind a wall with her, uh, with some chicken and junk hanging from his mouth. Now, according to his memory, it was running more like a hyena than a normal dog with his shoulders up, you know, way high. And they said his nose was real short and the ears was like, more of a like a he said like a elf ear so I guess it was like pointy or whatever but he can't remember if it had fur or not and he said but it you know it was naked and it wasn't long after that he overheard the older kids talking about the dog men and realized that that's what he seen and I like Wes he was a real like a guy that you know, they, they always would, wouldn't trust stuff. You know, he kind of would hear it and he'd be like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe not. And he admitted that his memory may have been influenced by the older kids and their stories and junk. And they could have just been a normal dog struggling to carry a whole chicken away after being scared. Now, the story just was laying there, you know, and nobody said nothing about it for months. And uh, after I spoke to Wes. Man, that time I had moved away and had only managed to visit Ben about three times since then. And the last time I met with him, we said we was gonna go to the um, <coughs> excuse me, we was gonna go to the um, get something to eat and all that junk, man. Now, and I got my own encounter of the dog man. So let me tell you what happened. Now on that same abandoned look where they told him um, apartments down and junk. Ben saw the homeless man, where well, he saw the homeless man, you know, in that dirty water. There was a little decent sized little fire burning. And it was early in the morning. It was kind of dark, man. Like, it was real. Like, well, I guess early for some people, late for some other people, depending on uh, how you live your life. So, I can see three shapes around the flames, like people shapes. And, uh,. His area being in kind of a rough area, so, you know, it ain't crazy to see some couple of homeless guys trying to stay warm or whatever. But I don't know how to describe it, man. Because the people who was by the fire, they weren't moving naturally, man. And my view wasn't great because Ben wouldn't move closer than what we was. But I'm telling you, them things never stopped, like, never. They didn't, like, stand completely straight up, man. And we watched them for about five minutes. And they was hunched over with their backs to us. Warming, you know, their hands up and stuff by the fire with their hoods up. And I remember one of them moving closer to the fire while keeping his hands on the ground. And it would have been easy to just stand and walk closer. But it moved real awkwardly using his arms. And um, everything about their movements was weird. Like everything. So I figured maybe, you know, they homeless and... You know, I figure homeless people probably get beat up a lot or 
beat each other up a lot and fight a lot. You know, I figure if you always in the street, you know, you probably got a higher chance of getting into a fight than somebody who not always in the street. So, you know, I was I was kind of excited in a way, man, because uh, I'm like, man, this must be the dog man they talking about. So I didn't want them to see us, of course. So we left pretty soon after, man, but I forced him to come back to that bonfire with me the next day. And uh, it was a milk crate, and it sat next to the uh, little circle on the ground where the fire was, the little, you know, burnt up little circle. And it had nothing to really prove that these folks weren't human or whatever. But strangely, it was some bones and stuff in the, uh, in the, in the, the burnt up branches and papers and stuff they used for the fire. So we could see some uh, handprints where they had like crawled, you know, from all around and all that. You know, you could see the handprints went away from the um, bonfire. And, you know, it was weird, man, because they, they, they literally were walking with their hands. And that was all we found. And we walked away feeling kind of silly and laughing at how we probably been stalking a bunch of just probably just drunk guys. And they just so drunk they probably couldn't stand up straight so they was just probably you know using their hands to help them walk now Ben had a realization though that messed with us man now as the hand trail started to fade away he pointed out a big old paw print becoming more and more like um what's the word uh uh, the distinguished this like prominent uh, distinguished in the middle of the fading handprints he seen they started trying to change or whatever then it struck me why I found the weird way they was walking as the man walked closer to the fire, to the fire he placed his feet in the same spot where his hands had been so we stared just in shock not sure what to make of the trail and then we heard some like sounds some dang dogs fighting man you know and it was like kind of close to the because the bushes and junk the trees and all that junk was growing out the grass was all growing right there next to where we was at and i man, look let me tell you something we ran like shoot if that was some dogs we ran like some cats man we was we was moving man we ain't even look man we just we ain't trying to figure out what it was, but when we heard them little dog noises, that's it, man. So, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it was just some dogs came over there at the fire because the dogs smelled the, maybe they had some garbage, garbage can, chicken they found or something. But whatever it was, we were not trying to figure out, and this is something that we're going to leave alone. Because some things you really just don't want the answer to. When I was a kid, like maybe 10 years old, we had a dog catcher in our neighborhood and we called him the dog man. And he ride around in a white van and uh, he got any stray dogs, you know, he catch them. You know, he was like, uh, you know, when we got older, we started calling them Pops. Now, for y'all that don't know, in the movie Friday, uh, John Weatherspoon is, is Ice Cube Daddy. And he called him Pops in the movie. And he was a dog catcher. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we started calling them Pops. As, you know, time went on and we got old enough to see Friday, we called him Pop. Now, he ride around in a white van and he get any stray dogs he'll see. And he take them to whatever it is. They take stray dogs. I don't know. You know, I guess the dog, the dog hospital or whatever you want to call it. But he wasn't no bad guy, you know. He, uh, you know, always be nice and smile and stuff. And he was happy of, uh, you know, doing his little job, man. Because, you know, the thing about the hood, man, is must be having pit bulls running loose and, and Dobermans and all that junk, man. Just... Just running loose. <laughs> so, when, so, you know, every now and then pit bull run up on a kid or something. You know, you just don't, you know, you don't want that, man. So, I remember one time a Rottweiler ran at me and started barking. And, you know, I'm sitting there, dang man, finna, I'm finna, my knees uh, slamming together. <laughs> Shoot. 
Ain't no worse fear than when that big rock run up on you, man. Yeah, oh. And dog, man, I'm telling you, that man came up out of nowhere. Like, if you got in trouble, you was better off calling a dog, man, than the police. Because he was there. It's just like he just had dog radar or something, man. Now, the dog ain't even, you know, wait for him to get on our side of the street. It was, um, like, you know, that mother just took off, man. This huge, big dog fight champion just, he ran off with his tail between his legs. Just at the, the thought of the dog catcher. <laughs> That's how bad that bear was. That's how Pops didn't play it, and all the dogs knew it, man. Now, he ran up and asked me if I was okay, and I told him the dog knocked me down. He gave me a pat on the head and a smile, and he said uh, <laughs> that he's going to whoop him good for me. I'm going to whoop him good for you now, boy. And I was a bit, you know, confused by that because, you know, I, I'm i like, what do you mean? Go whoop? You know, I knew he caught the dogs. I didn't know he whooped the dogs. But anyway, he, you know how old guys do, they, they rub your head, like kind of scruff your hair like, a, like you a dog <laughs> or something. And he went back to his van. Now... Nothing really seemed off about the dog, man. He seemed just be another hard-working member of the community or whatever. And he was proud of his job, and sometimes he bragged, and he told tall tales of catching prize, uh, catching a whole dog fighting ring. And, and one time he said he fought a, <laughs> caught a, a dog fight champion with his bare hands. <laughs> he said all he had was his bare hands, a, a biscuit, and a, and a, 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 a handkerchief, man. And, uh... He said he the one who caught the the dogs Mike Vick head for dog fighting all that man. He he said he just he just when it come to dog catching he said he the man. He said pops from Friday was based off him. <laughs> he said that's where they got the idea from. It come from him man. And um, he seems to just be another uncle uh, without a nephew man. And come to think of it, nobody ever saw his family man. But he had that real uncle vibe to him. But he ain't never had no family, man. He never mentioned no family. And nobody knew where he lived. Nobody thought much about it. Stuff ain't really get messed up until the pets started disappearing. Now, this one, everybody started getting worried, man. Now, we in a little suburban neighborhood. And, you know, and uh, our neighborhood was mixed, too. It just wasn't all black people, man. It was white people. And, you know, them white folks, man, like, pets is like they, <laughs> they little sons and they daughters, man. You know, black folk, we like our animals and, you know, but, it, but you know, it's like, hey, man, you, man that dog, why that, that dog on the table? That dog better not be at that table. That dog better not be on my couch. You know, you know white mugs, they be, they be in the bed with the dog. I seen, uh, um, I seen a, 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 a white mug, um. Uh, in the tub with they with they with they cat. I don't even know how they got the cat in the tub. <laughs> Shoot. Anyway, you know. Um, so you know, people started freaking out, man. And uh, it wasn't all pets that was disappearing. It was just the dogs. Now I brought this up to the dog man, pops, and he seemed like real concerned, man. Like and uh, like he had just found out some friends of his or something was missing. And he told me, I'm going to get to the bottom of that. And, he, you know, he wasn't smiling no more when you saw him. It was now like a cold, ice cold look on his face, man. And uh, and you can tell, like, you can tell he, he had a lot of emotion in his eyes. And you couldn't tell if, was it passion? Was it fear? You know, it was hard, but you can just tell he wasn't the same mindset that he usually had. Now, my best friend, G Money, his dog went missing. And he crying and crying and you know I tried to you know just tell him hey man calm down you know it's, it, I can go get you another dog look just like that. <laughs> you know, he he wasn't hearing it man and uh, he said he didn't hear that dog since you know he was a little kid or whatever man and he's like ain't nobody just walked off with him because his dog was the size of a bicycle man so you know you ain't just getting him and walking off. I'm like, he'll come back, G, you know, just wait on him, man. You know, he probably found some other little fan, little dog, and they, you know, G chilling out, man. He'll be back. And he's like, no, man. Ain't none of them come back, man. None of them ever do, man. And he put this look of just pure sadness on his face. And I knew it was time to get up out of there. So I walked on, man, and got up out of there. And uh, on the way out, I saw something. On the way out of his crib or whatever, it was a figure of a dog. Now... 
it was on his kitchen table next to an open envelope that said Sandy in rough handwriting, like a little dog figurine, man. You know, not like a, not like I saw a ghost dog shape. <laughs> I saw like a, a toy dog thing. And um, it, and Sandy, that's the name of his dog or whatever. And um, and they spelled it wrong. I don't know how you spell Sandy wrong, but yeah, the mug spelled it wrong. Now, why his handwriting was real rough looking. The figurine was like real detailed. It looked like, you know, somebody must have carved this mug by hand. You know, it didn't have no made in China or nothing on it. And it um, looked just like Sandy. And his mama was standing over it and she talking on the phone. And she gave me a little wave when I passed and I waved back. And I walked out the door and I heard something about no return um, address. So I'm making my way back home and we lived in a little small house. And, um, you know, everybody's house looked the same, man. You know, small little white houses. And I saw somebody crouching over my neighbor, little black poodle. It was sleeping in the sun, and it hadn't seemed to notice the person was sneaking up on it. I said, hey. And the, the figure turned around, and it was the dog man. And the poodle turned and saw the dog man had been sneaking up on her and started, you know, yapping and running away and all that. And the dog man whirled around. And asked me if something was wrong. I said, man, what you sneaking up on that dog for? What you doing, Pops? He said, I'm just going to pet her, that's all. And he said that. He had a little pout on his face. And he ain't seen, you know, much. Like, he ain't seen, like, you know, such a bad guy now that I see, like, the, the sadness on his face. Now, this couldn't have been a guy that, that, that took my friend dog, man. I thought to myself. And, I, you know, I said, my bad, man. You know, uh... I'm sorry, man. You know, I, just with this whole dog thing, I didn't, I didn't know it was you, Pops. So he just, you know, he just uh, said, I understand, man. And he winked at me. And, uh, you know, I just kept I just explained to him that, you know, I was worried that he was going to kidnap him. Now, his face turned to stone when I said that. Kidnap him? What make you think they being kidnapped? And he asked almost like, like, uh, like, you know, like, kind of like, man, almost like, you know, I don't know, it was weird, man. And he went out, um, when I, when he said that he grabbed one of my shoulders, it was almost like he, like, like he was acting like I knew something or something, man. So I jerked out his, I, I jerked away from him and I ran away and I looked back and he was walking in the other direction towards the uh, forest. So I'm like, man, I, I must, I don't know who it was, but I really set him off, man. You know, I don't like to be touched, man. He touched me with them, with them nasty dog hands, man. Don't be touching me. You be uh, touching dogs all day long and different dogs and wet dogs and feeding them out your hand and junk. You don't touch me with So I went home and told my mom about how weird the dog man was. And she, you know, told me, it'd, you know, go get some rest or whatever. I went to go to go sleep, and I had a, a nightmare about, like, a, 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 a horrible, like, whimpering noise in the woods. And all of a sudden, I heard a howl so loud that I'm telling you, it sounded like it was right in my ears. And I woke up, man, and I saw a figure, man. I've been seeing figures all day, man. And I seen the figure of a man outside my window walking with a bag over his shoulder. And he turned like he knew I was, like I was looking at him. And I turned his head towards my window. And it was the dog man. And he gave me a quick smile. And he headed into the woods. Real slow and deliberate. And just confident, man. And I tried to go back to sleep, but I couldn't manage it. The image of uh um, of my boy of my boy dog rotting in a in a cave or somewhere out in the woods or you know, wherever this Sick dog catcher man, then 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 took his dogs, man, and I had to know, man. So I figured, I owed G money, you know, figure this thing out, man. You know, he deserved to know what happened to his dog, cause I see how much it bothered him. So I snuck downstairs. It was midnight, and my mama she was sleeping and all that. So I put on my coat and boots and I snuck outside, and it was a clear night, man. You know, the moon. So I had a little moonlight and junk. And I didn't want to take no chances, so I still grabbed, you know, uh, we had a flashlight. You know, this back in the days before cell phones was, like, popping like that, you know. So, um, 
And then I took a knife too, man, because you know if I gotta poke somebody, I'll poke somebody, bro. I'm a, I'm a suburban boy, but at the same time, boy, if I gotta poke you, I'm gonna poke you now. <laughs> you know, shoot, better to be safe than sorry. Remember my granddad always said, boy, I better be safe than sorry, boy. Now I followed the path that the dog man had taken into the woods, and I noticed that that it wasn't really no sound out, man. It felt like it wasn't no animals out, you know, nothing but trees and trees, and it was like. I don't know, it just felt overwhelming or whatever, but I kept going. Now, after a while, I felt like I had been walking for an hour, and I got to this house, this old house, man. And it was white, you know, but, it like, half the paint was chipped off, and the wood was all rotted and stuff. And it was a little sign in front, and it said, the dog house, house, like H, it said the G, like duh, and then dogs, D-O-G-G, like Snoop Dogg. And then Howls, H-O-W-S. Now, and now that I really think about it, it kind of looked like the writing that was on the envelope that I was at my boy, at my boy house that his mama was looking at. So, um, I'm thinking like, whoever this is, this had, you know, this, this is it. This is just the moment of truth, you know, so whoever, you know, if this the dog, man, and he was behind it, you know, the whole time, man. This sick mug been walking among us, man, and and acting like he all concerned and junk. And he been kidnapping the kidnapping the dogs the whole time, pretending to be our friend, man. So I had to know what was behind that door, and I noticed it was half open and the light was shining through it. You know, I wouldn't need the flashlight then, you know, because the good old moonlight and junk. So I put it away, and I'm and I creep it on up. Now, inside, outside was looking real raggedy, but the inside wasn't too bad. So, um, you know, just a little couple of pieces of furniture and stuff, but it wasn't just falling apart and junk. And it was an old TV playing a show about dogs on the Animal Channel. And the volume was all the way down. And I looked to the other side of the room. And it was a whole bunch of little dog figurines and junk and some oil paints. And, uh, and, and mugs was... Um, like doing it, to, I guess, look like the dogs he done took. You know, that's kind of weird, man. Psychopath got enough time to, you know, you stealing a dog, not just stealing them to. I know some people steal dogs and they use them in dog fights. And then, like, they steal the little small dogs to use them as, like, warm up dogs for the. to get the. to get the big dogs ready to kill, man, or whatever. So I looked over to the small little kitchen. And the only food was a half empty bag of dog food. And uh, I'm like, okay, you know, who eat it? Is the man eating the, fattening the dogs up and then eating the dogs? And I put, you know, I'm just, my mind just going all a hundred di different ways, man. And I seen one bowl on the floor, just one bowl. And I'm like, why would it only be one bowl if he taking multiple dogs or whatever? And there wasn't no dogs on this floor, but it was the one bowl there. So I'm like, is he eating out the dog bowl? And now that junk just like instantly made me just yeah, like you. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you know, <laughs> even if I bought a brand new dog bowl from the store, I still couldn't eat out of it because it's a dog bowl, man. You know, it's just, you can't get past your mind. It's a dog bowl, man. So I'm like, what's wrong with this man? Like, I think he was half dog or something. And I seen clothes thrown on the couch. I'm like, okay, maybe he sleep. He probably, you know, he probably. And uh, so I'm thinking his bedroom got to be upstairs or whatever. So I said, I go check the basement, you know, and he, he shouldn't hear me because he way upstairs. So I headed down, you know, these stairs and they was creaky too, man. And uh, I saw what is easily the most hor horrifying freaking thing I ever seen in my life. And it was dog bodies all over the floor. I mean, huge bites taken out of their throats and taken out of their faces. And some of them were skinned and they, they skin hung up to dry next to the bodies. And I almost vomited. I was finna vomit all over the place. I don't know how I held it in. I guess the only reason I held it in because I hadn't really ate none. Because when I got home, I went to sleep. So I guess I ain't had nothing to vomit out. But I, if I'd hear something in there, it'd have been vomit everywhere. And the smell was so powerful, I wasn't even smelling it no more. I was tasting it. It was like it was just coating my 
It's just a coat of, coat of dog, dead dog smell all up in my throat, man. And there was a few dogs that were still alive. And, you know, but, like, real, like, skinny, man. Just skinny, weak. And they, um, and they were bleeding. And, um, and, 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 and it was, man, bro, it was, I seen the, the, um, the black poodle. And it was shaking. And I looked over to the center room, and there it was, man. They, uh, laying, that was my, that was my homie dog, man. And I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, what, what, what's the reason? What's the, and then I seen him. He was covered in blood and laying naked right in the middle of the dogs. And he had a dog face on his face, like, like you know, leather face from the Texas Chainsaw thing, but it was with a dog, man. And when I seen it, I almost screamed, man. And then, um, thinking that he seen me, I realized he was asleep. And you know, my my god dog was right there. And I don't, I, I don't know if his dog was unconscious or whatever, but my god dog was right there, and he had a leash in his hand. Holding on to the dog. And then I heard the whimpering. Because the dog saw me. And the dogs was thinking. You know I'm, I'm going to help. Because I knew some of the dogs. Like I said. You know I've been. You know this is my neighborhood or whatever. And I seen the dog man start to move a little bit. So I snuck over there. And I tried to get Sandy man. And she started licking me and stuff. And, uh, and I cut the leash. And pulled up the stairs, went on telling him, you know, what's going on now. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, he was still down there asleep, man. But then I heard some growling behind me. But I could tell it wasn't no dog, it was a human. Uh, 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 so I turned around, and that dog, man, was awake and standing up on all four of his legs. So I spread, man, I'm talking about, you talking about running. Shoot. Shoot. Boy, Usain Bolt couldn't have kept up with me that day, man. And I could hear him behind me barking and growling and snarling and howling and jump. And just when I thought I could slow down, it's like I could smell his dang breath, man, because all that blood and stuff was on him, too. So he, you could smell him. He'd been in there with them dogs. You could smell him, man. And I could smell him. He getting closer, man. And I'm putting, I'm hitting it, man. I made it to the edge of the woods, and I looked back. And I sink the dog man down, still on all fours, man. And he wanted that mask. I guess he lost the mask while he was running. And he screamed at the sky and turned around and went back in the woods. Like, how at it, man? Now, this is where I don't know what happened. Like, I guess I blacked out and I woke up in my bed and it looked like, uh, you know, it looked like it might have been noon or something, man. And uh, my mama was sitting on the bed, you know, she's sitting on the bed right there with me. She said, sweetheart, what was you doing out there in them woods? At the beginning of, uh, uh, the, uh, the, in the beginning of the morning? And she was just so, you know, just real concerned and sweet. And, but at the same time, she still was kind of, you know, I could see she was kind of shook up. So, and, uh, yeah, it kind of, you know, broke my heart, man, because, um, you know, I, I knew she cared. I knew I probably scared her to death, man. And I told her what had happened, and I'm sitting there crying and junk. And she said it'd be all right, and that she was going to tell his bosses and all that, and they wouldn't let him be a dog catcher no more. And, uh, and, uh, then we found out my, my homeboy dog made it to the house, but that they needed me to, um, uh, Tell him where the dog catcher was at. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, it was, I was shook up. But as the time was going by, I was starting to, you know, kind of get a grasp and get a hold of it a little bit more. So, you know, I'm crying and she crying. <laughs> I told her what was going on. So the next day or whatever, they, they said they had sent the search party out. And, uh, yeah, people from the community, the police, everybody, firemen, everybody, man. They went into the woods, and they uh, got to the doghouse. And they found it, and they found everything I told them. And I think maybe it was like 
five of the 25 of, of the dogs that had been stole made it out alive and uh and the dogs had been really abused man like really abused and the only thing they didn't find was the dog catcher pops the dog name whatever you want to call him man now they contacted the people who you know his bosses and stuff and they said they ain't had no dog catcher in that area as far as they know he never he never existed and uh, nobody ever got his name, so we never could find him. For all I know, the man probably still out there today. So all this time, he been riding around, just pretending to be a dog catcher, so everybody could, I guess, so he could get to know everybody and get to know their dogs and and get and so also he could just uh, steal them and become. Dog letter face, that's <laughs> crazy, man. And I know he still got to be out there, man. And I know he's still out there. I know he didn't found somewhere else to go. And one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is to try to help me cope with it. And I feel like if I type it out and if I tell people the story, maybe some of my fear and depression will leach out of me and onto the page or something like that. And the other reason I'm bringing this up is because I moved in. Uh, I moved, you know, I'm, I'm grown now. I moved out, and uh, I got a girlfriend and stuff, and she the nicest girl in the world, and she got this dog named Tuffy Guy. That's a nice little name. I like that name. She, that was kind of creative. <laughs> but anyway, I woke up one morning, and I came downstairs, and I seen her crying on the couch, and I asked her what was wrong, and she said that Tough Guy must have ran off through the night. And the weird thing is, she didn't remember putting them out of, of course, didn't leave the door open or nothing. Now, my heart dropped and my face turned to stone. And she asked what was wrong and I ain't hear her because I walked out the front door to the mailbox and I checked it. And I ain't seen nothing in the mailbox. So I felt relieved because I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, somebody seen them run off or whatever. And, you know, uh, you know, cool. It's just whatever. So I, I maybe got... Took to the pound by mistake or whatever, man. Maybe he was hit by a car, you know. Now, that hurt to think he got hit by the car, but shoot, that was better than getting caught by the dog, man, for sure, man. Now, I walked back inside and realized I wasn't wearing my glasses. And I walked back upstairs, and, uh, and that's when I said, okay, we're going to go. And I'm going to get ready. We're going to go find my, my lady dog, man. Because I know how much a dog mean to her. And that's when I synced it. Right there on the nightstand was an envelope. 